I had to add 24 tetrahedrons to the ones that were already there. So this is one isotropic vector matrix is 20. The other one is 20, that's 40, plus 24. 40 plus 24 was 64 tetrahedron metric. The 64 tetrahedron metric is a match to many, many things. I'm going to give you a hint. There is 64 codons that generate the 20 amino acids of your DNA structure. Okay? Now, uh, when I found the 64 tetrahedron grid, then I realized that that was the quanta in which symmetry was present everywhere and equilibrium was truly generated at the center. But g what got me really excited is that I realized what I had built. What I had built was a fractal structure, just like the 2D fractal structure I showed you at the beginning, but this one in full 3D uh, spherical coordinates. The only true fractal 3D spherical coordinate that you will find. Can everybody see the vector equilibrium on the inside and then the vector equilibrium on the outside? This continues to grow to infinity. And I could see that the inside vector equilibrium, its radius is exactly half the radius of the one on the outside. So the geometry grows in fractals, but not only does it grow in fractals, the fractals are perfect optics. You see? And so I got really excited. It's like, oh my God, here it is. The structure of the vacuum. Equilibrium to infinity. Infinitely big to infinitely small. And then I noticed further that how this was constructed is constructed this way. Let me see if I can let go of some of this stuff. Actually, I'm going to leave that. I realized what I had built. I had built a matrix based on eight star tetrahedron, each having eight tetrahedron in it. Okay? All coming together towards the center to generate the star, uh, the 64 tetrahedron grid. But when it did, the eight stars coming together, okay, here you're only going to see six, plus the one in front, and then there's one in the back you won't see. So the eight stars coming together generate the vector equilibrium in the middle. Why is this significant? Eight star tetrahedron is made out of eight tetrahedron pointing outward, radiation, coming together to generate the vector equilibrium, which is eight tetrahedron coming towards the center, generating contraction. So now, not only did I have found the geometry of equilibrium, but I had found the only fractal 3D metric, and it generated expansion and contraction. Exactly all the axioms I had placed for myself when I started this investigation of the geometry of space. Mm. <laughs> I was so excited. I'm still excited. <laughs> I, yeah, I was doing this in my brain. I didn't have a computer, and I confirmed it later on computers. But I was like, oh my God, this is 
so awesome. And then something really weird happened. I knew I had the fundamental structure of space. I knew, you know, I was definitely saying, now realize you guys, if we truly have the fundamental structure of creation, then technology that's based on this information is going to tap directly into an infinite potential of energy, infinite potential of gravity, infinite potential of rejuvenation, regeneration, and so on. You're talking serious change in our ways of doing technology. So I was really excited. And then a bunch of people in England called crappies. Those are people that measure and photograph crop circles, okay? Now, I know you guys, you know, crop circles, you know. There's scientific papers that were just published in peer-reviewed journals about crop circles, you know, because many of them are not being able to be explained by people going in the fields at night and stomping around, you know, Doug and Dave drinking moonshine and <laughs> freaking everybody out. Some of them are not easily explained and actually pap papers have just been published in peer-reviewed journals saying that this might be a new source of energy. But the crappies that I'm talking about decided in 1997 that if somebody is trying to talk to us through the crop circles, maybe we should talk back. So they went in the crop circles and they wrote in big letters by stomping around with their boots, what do we need to know? Good question. And the next crop circle that occurred was the largest crop circle to date at that time. And this one. <laughs> Have we seen this somewhere? <laughs> this is everything we've been talking about this morning. What do we need to know? Well, that's really nice. They give us this. They even made it in a way that's not reproducible by Doug and Dave drinking moonshine. Because <laughs> all the, the hay is Woven, wo woven in a way that you can, it makes effects of light and shadow that gives the vertices, the edges of 3D tetrahedron. <laughs> that is not easily done in the middle of the night. <laughs> <laughs> and so. Um, and, and it was enormous. It was the largest today. Uh, it was much larger than anything previous to that. And it was interestingly situated near uh, ancient, you know, sacred site. And then a few weeks later, the next crop circle, a few uh, weeks later, was another iteration of the same thing. So they were insisting on the pattern. What do we need to know? You guys get it? Look at tetrahedral fractal geometry. Right? How do you fit infinity in a finite space? Note that on these fractal curves, although there's not a boundary around the whole thing, the boundary is implied because the circles are all there of the smaller boundaries of the fractal. You guys follow this? So I was like, oh my God. Well, you know, when I found this, I was living at my friend, Gabrielle Cousin, you know, uh, uh, in Arizona. And, you know, he found me jumping on his couch, pulling my hair out. I got a picture of that part in the middle and I realized what it was. 
It's the exact same.